Welcome, young scientists. Ever wonder why planets that are closer to the sun are whipping around a lot faster than planets that are further away? Like Mars, who makes it in about three months around an entire revolution around the sun, where Jupiter takes 12 years to do the same. I actually had a theory on why that was, and then I was able to test it. So stay tuned for me showing you how I did that in this experiment. I remember that orbital motion is the motion of one object revolving around another and so our Earth revolves around the Sun in that same motion. Uh, the gravity is the gravitational pull of the Sun on the Earth and, and planets that are closer will probably have a greater pull or greater force of gravity. Uh, then uh, you always have inertia which is the resistance to change in motion and those two forces together uh, if they are 90 degrees from each other is going to make the uh, revolution around the Sun possible. So I thought that if I increase the gravity uh, it would change the radius of the uh, orbital path of the planet. So here was my question that I wanted to answer for this experiment. How does the Sun's force of gravity on a planet affect its orbital path? And then I made a hypothesis here and if I increase the force of gravity on a moving marble then the marble will curve a path of decreasing radius. That's right, I'm not able to go to outer space to measure the planets and no I don't have 12 years to measure how long it takes for Jupiter to revolve around the sun. So I found a way to do it with just a simple marble and some cardboard. Here's my experimental setup. All I did was get a large piece of cardboard or a piece of wood or cutting board and put a piece of paper on it. And then I got a tube. You could use paper towel roll or just roll a poster board up into a cylinder and use that as a tube for the path of your marble. And then all I did was uh, allow that marble to have a consistent inertia by rolling it down a ramp of a consistent angle. Now I had to fool around with this angle in order to make it the, uh, the perfect angle so of course I did a few tests and found the right angle to move the marble at a certain speed. I wanted to make sure that my, that, um, my marble could be going so that it makes a nice path on the piece of paper and I can see that path on the piece of paper. So before I even did any experimenting or measurements, I uh, looked at the trajectory of the marble that's coming down the tube. I had to make sure that my tube is straight. If my tube is crooked, it's going to go off to the side. But if I have it straight, then it's going to be able to go in a straight line. And how did I actually let the marble draw a straight line? Well, boom, here's the secret. You just put the marble in a uh, container cover and put some food coloring there. You can have different colors of food coloring and even mix the colors to make different colors of food coloring so that you can draw the path of the marble as it goes down. Alright, so with this experimental setup, this is showing the marble having inertia. But remember that we want to have inertia and gravity on the marble. How are we going to test different amounts of gravity when we're on Earth with a consistent gravity. I was thinking about that problem too, but this is what I decided. Boom. I thought about what I learned in high school physics, and don't worry, I won't get into details, but I know that the force of gravity, gravity can be reduced if we put something on an inclined plane. So maybe if I tilt the plane that the marble is running down, I don't have to have the entire force of gravity on the marble. I can let the marble go down slowly by decreasing the angle of the plane or more quickly by increasing it. So this force, the force of gravity, gets stronger as I increase the, the angle, this angle here, that I roll the marble down. Okay. And later I'll show you how I use this formula, the force equals the mass of the marble times gravity times sine theta to get the actual force of gravity when it is on this ramp. Now this is not the ramp I'm talking about because this ramp 
applies inertia. I need to angle this cardboard piece or cake pan or baking pan, whatever you decided to put your uh, paper on. But this piece is the piece that's going to have an, a, another angle and that is the angle that will increase or decrease my force of gravity on the marble. I had to use a protractor. You can print one out and cut it out and put it on some cardboard in order to determine your angle. But this is what I did. Okay, boom. Now look at the cake pan or the piece of cardboard and see that I put a pillar here. This is an eraser and I would measure the angle of how much I'm gonna tilt it. So when the marble comes down here with its inertia, gravity will push the marble down this ramp this way. Not the entire force of gravity, but just a little bit of gravity because um, I put these pillars here. And I can always increase that gravity by increasing the height of this pillar and increasing my angle that it is on the ground so that that marble feels more and more gravity towards this direction. So here are my results at three different forces of gravity or three different angles of my kick pan or my card. As you can see, I used three different colors and I did three trials of each color, totaling nine trials. This is what happened. The marble came down its cylindrical tube, giving it a certain inertia. 90 degrees from that inertia is the force of gravity, which is this direction. The gravity pulled the marble instead of going at a certain straight path, but pulled it down to make a curve. And remember my hypothesis decided that if I increase the force of gravity on that moving marble, then the marble will curve into a, a, a tighter and tighter arc. Or the uh, radius of this circle will decrease. Okay, so here's my first angle, here's my second angle with three trials, and the third angle with three trials. Here's a breakdown of what it would look like if a satellite orbits a massive planet, or in our case, our planet is orbiting the sun. Here is our um, cardboard piece or our cake pan with the uh, marble that was on it, and we are just taking a segment of the orbit okay gravity is pulled downwards because we angered our pan downwards and we're replicating how gravity would act on um, the sun or how the sun would pull, use gravity to pull the planet this way and then this is the force of gravity and then our um, inertia is 90 degrees from that so our inertia goes out this way and the inertia plus gravity will pull us into an arc and if I were to draw this arc outside of the piece of paper then it would uh, theoretically try to come in a circle uh, creating our entire orbit uh, like uh, demonstrating the planets orbit around the Sun so this is how I would record my data now I chose three different angles you could choose different angles than me depending on how fast your marble is going and your experimental setup you may find different angles that work better so whatever the angles that you chose should go in this column let's go through an example calculation where I have to have a certain angle that I put my baking pan and it's going to represent a certain percentage of Earth's gravity so Here's how you do it. First, you make sure you go to mode and you are in degree mode. Press enter and then second mode to quit. Next, we're going to go through an example calculation. Gravity percentage is gonna be sine theta, which is the angle times 100%. Here is an example. If I have sine zero, this should make sense, times 100%, then it's gonna be 0% of the gravity because my cake pan is flat on the surface representing no gravity what about if i had it at a 90 degree angle which is straight up and down it should make sense that i would have to have a hundred percent of earth's gravity because it's going straight up and down and that marble is going to feel the full force of gravity now let's say for example one of your angles makes the pan at 10 degrees so if i do that that's going to be 17 percent of Earth's gravity and um, maybe 20 
would be 34% of Earth's gravity. When I change the angle, the greater the angle, the greater represent the greater amount of gravity I'm representing. Now once you have the percentage of gravity, then you can start filling out this chart. Three different percentages of gravity, not including the zero percent because that would have been a straight line. But you're going to have to measure the width of the arc in centimeters and the arc height in centimeters. There are three trials for each angle and you would fill in the width here and the height here of the three. Um, here's the second one, the width here and the height here and the third one here and here. And then take the average of these three numbers and put it here, the average of these three numbers and put it here so you have three different averages. Now let's go ahead and find out how to calculate the radius from this example. Let me show you this beautiful website. Okay, so this is a formula of how to calculate the radius. The radius is going to be the average height of the three trials divided by two plus the average width of the three trials squared divided by eight and then divided by h. Again, make sure the 8 and the h are in parentheses because they're both on the denominator when you're using your calculator. So you would put it in and get a certain radius. After that, double check your answer by putting it in here. Here I had an example where my height was 3 centimeters and my width of the arc was 28 centimeters and then I calculated a radius of 32.3 centimeters. Now you can even move this height to change the height for your other percentages of gravity that were represented. Uh, you can also change the widths here and double check your answer from the formula that you used. To get to all this data, go to mathopenref.com slash allofthis.html. You're gonna do this three times so that you have your three different radii here and then you can actually see if you support or refute your hypothesis remember again that our hypothesis is if I increase the force of gravity on the moving marble then the marble will curve a path of decreasing radius we can continue to see and discover more things about plants and verify if our discoveries about astronomy are true Go ahead and perform this experiment. I was thrilled with my results and I hope that you will be too. Good luck.